What's going on guys? We have a very lazy day recipe for you. We actually have four. Dessert for lazy people, basically. Um, it's gloomy outside. I have my comfy sweater on. I want something quick, delicious, minimal work. Number one, this is probably just very, very lazy. We're gonna get the oven started going 350. Uh, this is actually a really secret recipe, isn't it? It's like one yeah. we used to do a lot. We did it a lot, yeah. For the first year of our keto diet, we're going to cut up a Quest bar and bake it. And you're gonna get these little like bite-sized puffed up Quest cookies like this this size. And I like to go as small as possible so there's as many as possible. We used to take them to movies. Step one, pick out a Quest bar flavor. Any, it doesn't really matter. We've tried basically all of them. They're super good. We're gonna go with a uh, chocolate chip cookie dough unwrapped. Don't look at the macros, who cares? This is a lazy recipe. And they reformulated these bars since we've been doing this from like four years ago. So now I think these are worse for this recipe. Cause like, look, you got the big chunks in them. They used to just be like bricks of like everything mushed together. But okay, we're gonna cut it up. So I have to cut it lengthwise, go for it. You could go smaller and trust me, I have. So just pull a pan out of your drawer, any pan. Go with this one, you just pop them on. All right, oven's at 350, perfect. We're gonna pop these in. I don't remember, it's anywhere from like zero to 10 minutes. And you can check on them and you can put them in a little longer, but I think six to seven minutes should do the trick. All right, guys, our Quest Bites are out of the oven and look at how good those look. So they're like, oh, they're still pretty soft to the touch. So we like to let them cool and they get a little hard on the outside, soft on the inside. You can tell this is a true Quest bar because the chocolate doesn't even melt. No meltage at all. Actually, it's pretty hard. Is that even chocolate? Mm. Oh yeah, and look at the bottom. This is gonna be really hot, but I should eat it anyway, right? Mm. So it's a cookie on the outside, and it's like soft, moist Quest bar on the inside. And I like to eat them really slow and just savor each and every bite. Lazy dessert number one, guys. Dessert number two. We're gonna make a very simple cheesecake bowl, but modified, no sour cream. We don't need a ton of ingredients. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna whip up some cream. You probably don't even have to whip it up. That's how lazy you can be, but I like the little fluff. So I'm just gonna pour some cream, eyeball. Okay, that's good. My medium peaks looks good to me. And so all you really do is add the rest of the ingredients and give another mix. So we have some Temp tea, so this is already like whipped cream cheese that I bought. I'm gonna add, that'll make it a lot easier, but some room temperature cream cheese or just any type of cream cheese, add it in. Stevia. And then your options as far as mix-ins go. So you can go like cinnamon, cocoa powder, which we have here. We have cocoa powder you can add in, and I've done this a lot. I like it, just some chocolate cheesecake mousse. Or you could go berries, and I'm gonna go berries today. So I'm gonna mix this up, then top it with berries, and we'll give it a try. So we got some blackberries here. And you can like serve it up nice in like a glass bowl or something, but I like it like this. Lazy dessert number two. Mm, 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 mm. That's good. And what I actually used to do, I used to make this ahead of time before dinner, because I was so excited for it. And then I'd pop it in the fridge, rush through my dinner, and then get down to business with this guy. So this is really good. I highly recommend it. And uh, yeah, put in whatever fillings, nuts, seeds, peanut butter, on to three. Okay guys, my turn to show you my two favorite lazy desserts. And the last one is going to be a mug cake. So you're gonna wanna stick around for that. First, we got a basic easy one, but sometimes you guys just need ideas. Like maybe you don't know that people do this, but this here is almond butter, which is an okay nut butter. I, in my opinion, some of the pros of almond butter is purely that it doesn't taste as good as peanut butter, so you can't eat as much. So this is just gonna be a little snack plate. You're gonna wanna get your almond butter, and a key step here, guys, is portioning out your serving. Do not take the entire jar to the couch. That never ends well. So there's a couple tablespoons worth of almond butter. All you're gonna do is take some dark chocolate and dip it in the almond butter, and that's your after dinner snack. So you got options here. You got these that are sort of like specially made to be like organic, low sugar added type of ones. This is 85%. Typically the lower the percentage of dark chocolate, the more carbs that are gonna be in it. So this is 85%, has the most carbs. 
This is 88% and it is a silky smooth 88%. This is actually my favorite. It's called Choco Love brand, really good. Lastly, this is available pretty much everywhere, 95%, very bitter, but this one is actually good because it's thin and you get big discs out of it. So it's actually good for dipping. So yeah, you can just make yourself a little plate like this. I'd probably take more chocolate. I like more of a high chocolate to nut butter ratio. And this is gonna be one of the more calorie dense lazy desserts we have, but it's a good one. You guys know how to dip, right? So we dip the chocolate in. You can also use the chocolate dippers for the cheesecake bowl recipe too. That could be good. Nature's candy. It'd be a lot better if you did peanut butter. Almond butter is not that good. Comment below, what do you guys like better, almond or peanut butter? Okay guys, here we are on to the fourth dessert and it's two ingredients. You probably didn't know this was possible, an egg, peanut butter. So ideally you want like some runny, creamy, natural peanut butter. If you get the hard stuff, it's just really hard to mix with the egg. And then another thing you have to be sure of, the egg has to be room temperature or you will just end up with a clump fest in the cup. It won't work. We take some peanut butter and you can definitely add sweetener and you can add salt to make this taste better. I don't usually do that, but it doesn't, it's not very sweet if you don't add sweetener. So you're gonna wanna add sweetener. I'll add a couple drops of stevia. So you can kind of just eyeball this. You want two tablespoons, right? Yeah. Get that in there. And then what helps if you have a natural peanut butter like this, get a little bit of the oily top in there too. Just a little. Then you're gonna take your egg, crack the egg in. And then mixing this can take a little bit of manpower. Just add a few drops of stevia, maybe 10. Once you have it mixed pretty well, we're just gonna microwave it for 60 to 90 seconds. Okay, so that took 50 seconds. And you'll know that when the peanut butter cake rises above the top of the mug in the oven, in the microwave oven, that's when you know it's done. So that's sort of what it looks like. It shrivels up. It doesn't look great, but. It shrivels up. That is what you're left with. It tastes pretty good. It's pretty nice and doughy. I'll cut it so you guys can see. It's very doughy. And like, it's pretty soft. You can see there. It tastes like mostly, mostly like peanut butter. This is definitely a tried and true recipe. You pretty much have peanut butter and eggs in your house all times of the year. Those are the four lazy keto desserts. Were they too lazy? Were they not lazy enough? Comment below and also let us know what your favorite lazy keto desserts are. If we get enough comments and good dessert ideas, we will make a follow-up video maybe using those ideas. We'll try some of them, see if they're good. Thanks for watching.